The Orlando Magic will start the 2025 season with seven of their first 10 games on the road. I see them starting out in South Beach versus a team who could not extend their six-time All-Star Jimmy Butler. Is this an opportunity for the Orlando Magic to upstage their Floridian rivals? Uh, I don't know. I want to say perhaps. I'm not as high on the heat as you are in the previous discussions we've had. And you guys should watch those videos. We talk about the heat in some aspect. And it's, you know, Shaw's really high on the heat. I am not. But considering Orlando, this is going to be their first game. It's going to be it's technically an away game, although they're still in the same state. But, you know, maybe they will. Maybe they won't. I, I still think the heat with Jimmy Butler, if he decides to play, um, you know, it can still be something, uh, a challenge for the magic. Um, but, yeah, it's possible. Okay, so let's take a look at their first 10 games. Um, I don't see them playing on the very first day of the NBA season. But like I said, they start out uh, versus Miami on the road. You know, last time they played Tyler Hero went completely off. But, you know, the reason why I'm high on the heat this season is because of Tyler Hero, because um, of Hami Hawkins, because of Haywood Highsmith, um, and because, bam, I think he's going to have an amazing defensive season and he's going to demand that the NBA hands over that Defensive Player of the Year award. Okay. So that's something to look forward yeah, to. Yeah, okay. I agree. I agree. I think that after they play the Heat, they go to the Nets, and then they have a back-to-back -back between the Nets and the Grizzlies. And that Grizzlies game is on NBA TV, I guess, which is considered a nationally televised game. So that's pretty cool. But, you know, the Nets, I, yeah. Are they in rebuild as well now that Michael Bridges is, you know, has moved on? And I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. Will Ben Simmons be the one? I just wonder. Yeah, I think Ben Simmons will be the one to answer your question. Okay. <laughs> you know, but, you know, that's a game that's, I mean, it's their first home game. It's the Magic's first home game. Mm -hmm. And it's just not, I don't know why it seems like a lot of home games for the, the very first home game for these teams, it's really not something to be really excited about. Right, right. So, so lackluster. I think the only team that we've talked about so far, and there may be others out there but that we've discussed, and you should watch that video, is the Knicks. When we talk about the Knicks' first 10, when they played the Boston Celtics. Oh, but I don't think that's their home game. I think it was a Celtics home game. Yeah, because it's ring night for them. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So at the end of the day, I think that Boston-Knicks uh, matchup is about the only – home opener for the for any team, in this case it would be Boston Celtics, that is like show stopping, like showcase, like must see TV. But like you said, the rest of these ones that we've been talking about, I'm like, they're lackluster. Why did the NBA do that? But you know, this is not a nationally televised game either. So then there's that. Right, right. When they played the Memphis Grizzlies, I mean they went one and one on the season last season yeah. without Ja. Mm -hmm. Now that Ja's back and it's on, you know, nationally televised game. Last time they played, uh Jaron Jackson Jr. and Paolo Bank Carroll went at it. I mean, it was a very good game, but you throw Ja into the mix. Hey. Yeah, you never know. But y'all will be getting back. So this will be, you know, maybe one or two, his second game playing mm -hmm. for this new season. So we'll see. I mean, I don't think he'll be uh, – He, I don't doubt he'll show us wh why we missed him, right? I believe he'll do that. But, again, he's still got to get his feet wet again. It's starting over, right? So we'll, we'll see. Playing against defense, that's the thing. You know, we all – you know, the gym the, – those gym clips and those gym videos look amazing. They, these play, NBA players look amazing. And then you put them in front of a, somebody who's trying to stop them. And it's like, oh, what? You didn't mm -hmm. show that when you did your summer play, when you did your summer, your summer tour. So the, the Magic have, they didn't really add much to their roster. The only person that they really added was KCP. And everybody else pretty much remained the same. So we're going to be looking at the same team. And I wonder what that will look like for 2025, right? And I think that's going to be the difference. Will KCP really make an impact on this on this roster, which will help move the needle a little bit further so the Magic can go deeper in the playoffs? Because I believe they'll still be a top 10 team. Um, but will they be top 10 enough to make it to the playoffs this season? So, mm -hmm. Well, with KCP, you definitely – get uh, a lot of three-point shooting, right? He can yes. definitely, yes. you know, stretch the floor for those guys. But I think he's a big piece, though, right? He brings over championship DNA. 
if I'm looking at this roster, I don't see any players on the Orlando Magic who have that DNA that KCP is mm-hmm. going to bring over a little veteranship there as well. Right. So I think that's a big move, though, especially when he's going to be in the starting lineup and they, yeah. they push Gary Harris to the second squad. So I'm OK with that. Gary Harris can, you know, just kind of help uh, support the second string uh, players when they come out there. But, yeah, no, I don't have a problem with that. I believe KCP two time NBA champion should be starting. Um, with the Orlando Magic on any or on any team he's on, as a, as a matter of fact, I think he's earned the right to be a starter. So yeah, yeah, and he also brings a lot of defensive presence. Which mm-hmm. the Orlando Magic is a really good defensive team already. Mm-hmm. Now, when they play the Indiana Pacers on October the twenty eighth, it is a home game. I think this will be a really good barometer for them because I believe the Indiana Pacers are standing in the way of the Orlando Magic being one of the Eastern Conference mm-hmm. contenders. This is a game to watch. Yeah, I agree. I think that what makes this schedule, in my opinion, pretty tough is the fact that they'll be on the road seven out of the 10 games. That a road, This is a road tour for their mm-hmm. first 10. And I think that will make this difficult to you. Not difficult. Not only that, they have two sets of back-to-backs. So not only do they have the back-to-back against the Nets and the Grizzlies at the top of their 10, but then in the middle of their 10, close to the end, they have Mavs and Thunder November 3rd and November 4th on the road and they would have been on the road for quite some time. So being on the road, I understand from a bas- for a basketball player is very difficult. Right. And then we're talking about games when you're playing up against, in this case, Mavs and Thunder. I think it's especially difficult for young teams. For me, it's just like, can they stay focused? Can they stay together? I mean, you're on the road, you know, young, mm-hmm. all this money access and all that. Yeah. Some of these cities are difficult to remain focused. And I don't know that Indiana is one, but Chicago might be, even though Mm -hmm. I think they should deflate the Chicago Bulls. But they're going to be starting their road trip, getting in town. And I don't know. You know, I think the Bulls can probably catch them slipping. I hope not. I don't think the Bulls can beat them because Orlando beat them four games to zero last season. So why wouldn't they? Right. But I'm just saying when they're on the road. Hey, you just never know. That's why veteran leadership is so important. Yes, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. And then they ended up with, they played the Pacers twice during their first 10. Yeah. I'm like, wow, Pacers is going to be getting it in. But then they ended up with end up with Pelicans. And, you know, I question that particular game because we're going to be looking at Zion 2.0. That's what I say. The new improved Zion. So I, I wonder what that will look like. And can the Orlando Magic hold down? Because I believe when they play them, they may have split the series as well in 2024. I don't remember, but yeah. Mm-hmm. What's interesting for me is the game against the Cleveland Cavaliers because the Cavs bounced them from the first round of the playoffs, although the Magic took them to a full seven. Yeah. I thought Ben Carroll was the best player on the court, mm-hmm. even though you had Donovan Mitchell as well. Yeah. I think I think the Magic could have easily, I shouldn't say easily, but they could have won that series. Yeah, and this I think this is where KCP is supposed to come in and for this next season, come mm-hmm. in and be be that difference maker that they need on their roster since they didn't have it, since they really didn't make a lot of changes on the offseason. So yeah, no, this is when KCP and Paolo Bancaro will be able to move the needle at least to go to round two in the playoffs if necessary. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Dallas OKC back to back. You touched on that. That's going to be a very challenging yes. little stretch for them, and then. Um, The Indiana Pacers, of course. And then, you know what? When they play the Pels with DeJounte Murray. Mm, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. That changes things for the Pelicans. Yeah. Huh. Because right now, the Pels have DeJounte at their starting point guard and move CJ to the shooting guard, which I think CJ is more accustomed to playing Mm -hmm. since he played with Dame all those years in Portland. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think this is going to be one of those games to circle on my calendar. Yeah. You know what? And then when we talk about that, DeJounte Murray with his length up against uh, Jalen Shuggs. I, I want to see what that looks like. Mm-hmm. They're know. both of them are really good defensive yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the way Jalen uses his legs when mm-hmm. he's defending and he gets really low. And so I think that's a, a really great quality that he has in his skill to be able to make sure he can try to stop the uh, opposing player. So I'm, one of the games that I'm looking forward to is a game against the Cavs. I think the Cavs is an Eastern Conference rival. For the Orlando Magic, I mean, I believe if they would want to see a deep playoff run, I believe Magic will have to go through the Cavs yeah, probably again, you know. And so, and since this is a redemption game, 
I wonder what Orlando would do in order to beat this first game that they have of the season against the Cavs. No, don't let our 2024 playoff run um, against the Cavs set the tone for what 2025 will look like for us. That's what Orlando should be thinking about, especially when they're going up against the Cavs. Oh, okay. Yes, definitely. Because there's some probably a little bit of animosity there. Oh. Yeah, a little egg on mm -hmm. face. Absolutely. The Orlando Magic finished fifth in the Eastern Conference last season. They did five and five for their first they 10 did. last yeah. season. I think one of the things that the Magic will have to really be mindful of when they are starting this first 10 games is their a big man depth. I know they have Wendell and Jonathan, but they're both injury prone. So just being able to monitor their injury when we're talking about the bigs in the East and West and the teams they're going up against, that could be something that would uh, challenge the Orlando Magic on how they can win games because these other teams, their bigs are pretty solid as well. So we have to, the Magic needs to really consider what that looks like, and I think that's a challenge that they'll face this upcoming season, especially, especially in the first 10. You know, I read somewhere that they are thinking about moving um, Zion to the center position. I'm like, Ooh. I don't know if that's mm. true. I don't know where. I don't know if it's on NBA TV or ESPN. Yeah. It's just a thought. You know, one of the the uh, editors can comment about something. I don't know what article I was reading, but I saw that. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I mean, I don't know how successful that is. But at the end of the day, Zion is a big body. I don't care if he's a four or five. And Wendell, you don't have to hold up against that. Yeah, Wendell was out with a hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it seems like, like you mentioned, some of the injuries, you know, Jonathan Isaac, they also had Mo Wagner, too, who could yeah. chip in at the center spot. Because I love when Mo and Franz are out there together. Yeah, yeah That yeah, tandem, yeah. the Wagner ah. brothers, they, they hype each other up. That, I'm telling you, I love I watching this play. <laughs> so, but that's something that they have to look at. And I'll be looking to see how the Orlando Magic manages their depth um, as we relate to the centers. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I noticed in this first 10, uh, the Magic have to face about four play, four teams that I know for sure are going to be at the top of the West. You got what? the Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah, the Memphis oh, Grizzlies. Oh, you coined that already, the Grizzlies? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Memphis Grizzlies with Ja, I don't see why not. Mm -hmm. Dallas Mavericks, been at the top. OKC. Oh, absolutely. What? Uh -huh. And the New Orleans Pelicans, especially with DeJounte Murray. You know, mm -hmm. so the Magic will get to see how they are going to compete mm -hmm. against these West dogs because, um, yeah, yeah, it's different when you play the Western teams. It, it really is. Wow. Mm -hmm. With all that being said, I have the Magic actually going 6-4 in their first 10. And so I have them losing against the Pacers, Cavs, Mavs, and Thunder. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have them going 6-4 and four as well. Mm -hmm. I have them losing against the Grizzlies. Ah, Dallas Mavericks, mm -hmm. the Pacers on the road, and also the New Orleans Pelicans. You haven't beaten the Cavs? Yeah, redemption. Come on. Anytime you get kicked out the first round, you coming in for fresh blood. I'm sorry. You coming in for blood, and I don't know that the Cavs will be ready because, you know, they got their new coach. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know. So I'm going with the magic on this. Jamal oh. mostly has them playing – I'm going with the magic. Ah! <laughs> okay. 